In this part of the talk, I'd like to talk about the variance that calls a dominant negative effect. Um, we have three types of pathogenic variants in the cold tier one gene. The first one are the glycine substitutions within the triple helical domain. So that was the first amino acid of this motif. Um, the second group are the splice variants uh, or the in-frame insertions, deletions or duplications. Um, I'll explain a bit more about these splice variants. So normally we have exons that are uh, with introns in between. Uh, these introns are spliced out at RNA uh, processing and all the exons are put together. If there is a variant in the splice donor, in the splice acceptor site, then there's aberrant splicing and uh, an exon can be spliced out or extra exons can be um, put into um, the protein. So we have a longer or a shorter protein with these variants. And the same is uh, true for the in-frame insertions or the deletions, duplications. These two groups of variants are called the dominant negative effect and I will explain more about that later. And then the third group are variants that lead to haploinsufficiency. In the last part of the talk, I will talk about these variants. And there's always variants that are not grouped in one of these three uh, groups, but I won't go into detail with them. In total, there are about 650 unique variants, and they can be found in a cold here one specific database um, or on ClimVar. So what is this dominant negative effect? Um, if we have a glycine substitution or a, a splicing variant, an aberrant alpha chain is formed. And because we have three of these chains in uh, um, collagen-3 molecule, um, we have a majority of the collagen-3 molecules with an aberrant um, alpha chain. Here's another um, more detailed representation. So and we see there's uh, abnormal helical winding and these uh, aberrant collagen molecules lead to weakened uh, tissues. If we look at the distribution of the different types of variants, uh, there are two uh, large studies that looked at these um, uh, patients. So um, one study with 146 index patients and one study with 572 index patients. And we see that in a majority of the patients, there's a glycine substitution. Um, so in 50 to 60% of patients, and usually these glycine substitutions are substitutions by a larger amino acid. Um, in about 30% of the cases, we see um, a splice variant. Um, and usually they're in the five prime donor sites of the protein. There is a clear genotype-phenotype correlation with these different types of variants. So it means that um, based on the genotype, we can group these patients into a, a, a worse or a, a, a milder phenotype. So if we look at the age of the, of first, the first major complication, we see that um, patients with the glycine substitution, so that's the green line, and with the splice variants, the purple line, they have um, a younger age at first major complication compared to the other variants. They also looked at the survival in these patients and in patients with a glycine substitution or splice variants we see that um, the survival is worst uh, compared to patients with a null mutation or a haploinsufficient mutation. And then if we look into more detail to these glycine substitutions um, it also seems to matter which substitution um, takes place, so which amino acid replaces this glycine amino acid. And we see that the larger amino acids like the valine or the aspartic acid um, amino acid causes a, a worse survival compared to, for example, the serine substitution.